Hi Chelsea fans, welcome to another video today on the channel and focusing on three stories that have caught my eye in the last 24 to 48 hours. First up is Edouard Mendy, the Ren goalkeeper that Chelsea are being heavily linked with as we look to make yet another signing this summer. Olivier Giroud on talking about the signing of Timo Werner and what it means for him in particular. And his comments are interesting. And Efren Ampadu, who impressed playing for Wales the other day. And there's comments made by Ryan Giggs on Ampadu on his future. But I want to put something out there that might get you guys thinking. Or not the signings that we've made so far. When you look at the squad, are we sort of top heavy? And Efren Ampadu might actually play a big part in this and become an important integral part of Frank Lampard's squad this season. All this is featured in the video. Stay tuned to the end. But for now, let's get cracking. So first up is the Senegalese goalkeeper, Edouard Mendy, 28-year-old keeper, playing for Rennes over in France. He's played a big part in their promotion up to the main league in France and played his part as they finished third in Ligue 1 last season, keeping seven clean sheets in 18 first-team appearances between October and March this year. So Edouard Mendy is being linked with Chelsea and it's clear that Chelsea want to do some business with the goalkeepers. We saw Willy Caballero come and step in for Kepa last season on different occasions and towards the end of the season. Kepa had his chance on more than one occasions and blew it with Frank Lampard but is prepared to stay at the club and fight for his place in the team. Whether or not Frank Lampard will be willing to give him that opportunity, if you've given up on him or not, is yet to be seen. But as we know, Petr Cech spoke of Kepa and the club's investment, seven-year contract, £72 million, and said that they were prepared to stand by him and back him. And I wonder if upstairs has maybe had some sort of an influence with the fact that they've made this commitment to this investment and we need to try and see it through. Will Kepa get his chance again this coming season, starting next Monday night away at Brighton in our opening game of the season? It's yet to be seen, but <clears throat> these reports regarding Mendy are becoming more and more consistent as the days go by in all sorts of different outlets. Is Eduard Mendy the answer? Or is he someone that's going to come in and fight Kepa for the regular start and with Caballero becoming the third choice in Frank Lampard's squad. Is that going to be enough though or do you want someone that's going to be maybe of a higher stature, no disrespect to Mendy, but someone like Anana maybe who is, who's got the Champions League experience. Is he somebody else that we should be looking at instead to come in and basically say right I'm here as a number one now Kepa you got to fight me rather than Mendy coming in and saying, right, I'll fight you for the number one, because Kepa probably would still be the number one, bearing in mind the investment. But it's interesting to see what's going to happen with Mendy. And there's the link with Petr Cech, who played for Ren before he signed for Chelsea. So we have to wait and see in the coming days if Chelsea will make yet another sign-in, being Mendy coming in. What do you think of Mendy? Do you think he's the answer? Or do you think he's someone just to come in and be that, that person that's going to see himself on the same level, not above, and, and provide that competition. It's a bit of a strange one if you think about it. I still think we should go after somebody to come in as the number one from the word go to force Kepa into upping his game. Does Mendy do that? I'm not so sure. Post your comments about this story in the comment section below. So let's talk Olivier Giroud and his role at Chelsea this season knowing that Timo Werner has come in and Tammy Abraham is there as well, fighting after a great season last year. We all know and expect Michy Batshuayi to leave the club. So we're going to have the three strikers at the club. Timo Werner, Olivier Giroud, Tammy Abraham. Now, if you look at the beginning of last season, Tammy Abraham was the number one and Olivier Giroud had to play second fiddle. Let's face it, he didn't play a lot. He come on late in games as a late substitute he played in other games bit part and we got to the point in january where he was looking to leave frank lampard convinced him to stay and in doing so Giroud found himself playing more often 
scoring goals and being a big influence towards from that point towards the end of our season. And if anything, he became the number one up front with Tammy Abraham playing second fiddle. Complete role reversal from the start of the season to the end. Bearing in mind, everyone was then still saying that Chelsea's problem is goals. Frank Lampard and Chelsea have gone out and looking to resolve the problem by going out and signing one of the, the most free scoring forwards and hottest properties in Europe in Timo Werner. So Giroud, while away with France, was asked about the situation with Werner coming in. And he said this, in every big club there's competition. It's always motivated me to fight for my spot. Now I'm not naive and I know the club bought Werner in to put him on the pitch. One thing's for sure, we don't have the same profile. He likes to go on the sides, he did it with his club and his national team. If it was a striker coming in with the same profile, I would have been more worried. But I think with the different games and the different teams, we'll play. The coach will use different tactical systems and I really hope I'll play for him what I did last year. He then was talking of the situation, as I said earlier, where he wanted to leave and Frank Lampard convinced him to stay. And he said, the relationship with the coach has changed clearly. Where we were looking to find a solution for me leaving, I started to know him better. We had a few one-on-ones and I think he started to know me better as well. So it was positive. We trust each other. He clearly told me I'd have a chance after the lockdown. So I gave his confidence back on the pitch. He knows my values and my professionalism. He said it in the press. I have a good relationship with him. It doesn't mean he'll start me every game. I have to perform in training to be in the starting lineup. And I think that was key with what he said about the profile. And if you look at the options we've now got up front in Abraham, Giroud and Werner, each of them are very different. Olivier Giroud, as we know, is the main target man up front. He's the physical presence. He's the link man. He's someone that is willing to, to stand there and take a clump from behind to play that one too, to lay the ball off. He can create goals for himself, but he is the main focal point when he plays in the team. Is Tammy Abraham that? No, he isn't. But he's much more mobile than Giroud. He needs to do much more for me in using the, his frame. He's, he's a tall, athletic individual. He needs to bulk out a little bit, but use his frame and his strength more. He doesn't do enough in the air for me. He needs to do much more. And by playing with Giroud, he'll learn that side of the game anyway as he continues to develop. Abraham likes playing in the channels as well, in between the centre-backs and the full-backs. But he's sort of much more mobile and someone that is slightly different to Giroud, but again, a different profile. Then you look at Timo Werner, who's completely opposite. He's quick, he's mobile, he likes to go wide and come in from the wide areas, using both feet, predominantly his left foot. But Timo Werner is outstanding. Timo Werner gives you that third different option up front. And for Frank Lampard, it's probably going to be a dream. As we face each team in the Premier League, they will arguably give you different problems. And to try and come up against those issues, you would then select the team that, as we all know, that's best to do the job. So you could see all three strikers rotate in plenty this year. But you have to say Werner would still probably start as the number one. Let me know what you think about those different profiles, what Giroud has said and about Werner. Comment section below. Finally in this video, Efren Ampadu. So Efren Ampadu is back at Chelsea after his lone move at RB Leipzig, where he got to play with Timo Werner. Didn't play enough due to injury, but when he did play, as we all saw Champions League against Tottenham, he was calm and composed, as he is with his natural ability anyway you always look at him on the pitch and he just seems that level of he, he plays sort of five to sort of five years beyond his age he's got that calming sort of level of experience even though he's not experienced if you know what i mean and he's just someone that just nothing phases him and ryan Giggs, talking after the wales game the other day which he impressed again said of the fact that Thiago Silva's coming in would be a great benefit to Ampadu. And I wonder if people now see him as a centre-half rather than centre-midfield. But more in that in just a second after what Ryan Giggs has said. And Giggs has said this, Thiago Silva's a quality centre-half and you can only learn from someone like that. I want all the players to be playing regularly, but sometimes it isn't the case. It's that balance over whether a top club is surrounded by top players and improving every day. 
but ultimately you need minutes on the pitch. That's a decision for Ethan. I've talked to him a lot about that. Last year was maybe a little bit different because of his injuries. You can see from the game he played against Tottenham, he was outstanding. Nothing phases him, he's a quality player and he just needs to keep fit now. And it got me thinking about Ampadu. And when you look at Efren Ampadu, as I said, straight away you think this guy is, is, is a level above his age. He's like five years beyond his actual age. Ampadu's only 19, which is unbelievable considering he's been about for sort of two, three seasons. But what he gives you is versatility. And Ampadu can play as a centre-back, as we've seen. He can also play in the middle and midfield. And when I said at the top of this video about being Chelsea being top heavy, I'm looking at the situation with our midfield positions. Now, we know we've signed Havertz, we've got Mason Mount, we've got Ross Barkley, we've got Ruben Loftus-Cheek, you've got Kovacic, Jorginho, Conte, Gilmore, and then you add Ethan Ampadu. Out of those players, who's naturally got defensive qualities? Naturally, Mason Mount, you wouldn't say so. He's more predominantly attacking. Ruben Loftus Cheek the same, Barkley the same, Havertz the same. So then you look at Matteo Kovacic, who's outstanding in both halves. He's sort of developing the defensive side and has been brilliant for us. Jorginho, when he first came to the club, he got exposed, got found out. But last year, the defensive side of his game improved, but still not to where we need him to be. That's not his fault. That's not his game. Billy Gilmore still away from the first team, I believe, for a, a season or two. So it leaves you with N'Golo Conte as the sort of naturally defensive-minded midfielder. But what about Efren Ampadu playing in that position? I think he's the same. I think he's defensive-minded. And I think, giving Frank Lampard that versatility, Efren Ampadu will find a position in the Chelsea squad this season. Whether he, the amount of games he plays is probably not going to be as much as, as you would expect. Ampadu could still be that person that gives Frank the option, especially if we have an, if, an injury to Conte or Kovacic. Ampadu can come in and give you that calm and influence, but also someone who's more focused on being in the middle of that pitch rather than going forward, which is where people are saying that we could be top heavy this season. It's just food for thought, just putting it out there. But Ryan Giggs is talking about the fact that he needs to make a decision. Efren Ampadu can only benefit by training every day with Thiago Silva, N'Golo Conte and people like that. And surely he has to be someone that's in Frank Lampard's squad this season. Let me know what you think about Ampadu, about everybody else in the comments section below. Smash the like button for me, subscribe to the channel, but make sure you hit the bell for notifications so you don't miss my videos come out, which is as often as I can. Thank you so much for watching. Post your comments and anything discussed in the video below. See you next time.